Welcome back. Today we have a special episode on Ian Lee's Catbot. Welcome, Ian. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Uh, you made a drive. You were uh, close by. Uh, you had uh, you had a show or a talk on the uh, on yeah, your. Yeah, I've been down at the uh, Code Mash conference down in Sandusky, Ohio. I uh, presented on the CatBot and Windows IoT Core. That's a pretty heavy robot. We moved it here and I didn't expect this. I mean, it's a beast. With its case, I think it's over 100 pounds. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so you built everything from scratch? Uh, everything's scratch. A lot of it's, most of it's uh, prefab parts. Uh, so open builds, frame, and uh, most of the uh, other components are derived from the first robotics competitions. But there's no like there's no uh, like a plan for it. Like you decided on the dimension, the right. size. The no, it all started out as CAD and uh, Fusion 360, and after about a month of modeling, uh, we had something that looks like this digitally, and then uh, then it had to become reality. Pretty sweet. I really like it. So, um, what does it do, and why? Those, those awesome wheels, what's up with those wheels and what, what does it do? So those are mechanum wheels and uh, those are the result of me deciding that if I was going to invest this much money into a robot, uh, I wanted it to be able to be a, a robotics platform that could do anything that I might want to do in the future. So definitely could have gone cheaper and easier with the wheels, but these are awesome. They can strafe in every direction. Uh, you can even turn a diagonal and strafe that direction. Uh, currently, that's that's driven through the RC controller, um, but with some programming in the future, we'll be able to fully take advantage of the the capabilities of those mechanism wheels. Nice. I see you have a uh, Raspberry Pi on there, so you have, I'm assuming you you have Linux or Windows running on there. Uh, yeah, they're running Windows IoT Core, um, and it also has on top of that Raspberry Pi a GHI. ProtoPie hat. Is this in use today or this is like for future plans since you're using the uh, the RC control? Uh, so the RC control only controls the wheels. Mm -hmm. There's a separate motor here that's driven by a uh, wheelchair motor uh, that drives a, an Acme threaded rod which pulls this uh, spearfish tubing up and down to uh, increase or reduce tension which then can toss this arm. Uh, and so this is all driven by the Raspberry Pi. Okay, and how does how does it release? What's the release mechanism? So currently, release is uh, is manual, uh, okay. just due to timing. But eventually, um, this arm, this release mechanism, which will fire in a few minutes, um, that will be servo controlled. Or, okay, or so instead of pulling a rope, maybe a servo pulling that uh, mm -hmm. the rope up to to release the. Can we try it? Can we see it? Sure, if you're ready. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cover. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess first we should maybe show how this is loaded. So uh, the way this would work is the the arm would come up, and that releases the tension. The arm would naturally fall down due to gravity into a position like this, and then this comes down locks it in place and then the motor goes back down. There is a button on the uh, ProtoPie which is, is why I ended up using your ProtoPie. It was the only thing I had that had a button <laughs> on it and it had female headers so that, that came in really handy to have. Uh, but once it's locked and ready to go um, we take our GHI t-shirt we put it in there and simply <laughs> Perfect! <laughs> we break stuff. We break stuff. Perfect. That's how I like it. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. So we earlier we were talking about 3D printing, and you were mm -hmm. telling me like how these some of these parts you and probably these too you yes. have 3D printed on your own shop. You have your own mm -hmm. 3D printer that you even made. Right. Yeah. I've I've been building Delta printers for a few years now. All of these are printed on on my printers that I printed. Nice. That I built. Um, so there, there actually ended up being 25 parts that had to be designed and printed on this and several hundred hours worth of actual print time. So it was uh, quite a task. I got uh, asked to do the talk at, uh, on October 6th and I had from there until now to get the entire thing built, designed, and printed and, uh, and, and this is where we're at. Do you do the 3D designs yourself or these are mm -hmm. things that others have made and you tweaked? No, all of these are entirely custom designs. Um, uh, so, you know, of course nobody's ever done this before. I needed some way to hold the spearfish tubing, everything down to uh, ways to hold the batteries in there 
and uh, even the uh, the Raspberry Pi, you can't you, know, you don't want to mount that stuff directly onto aluminum. Just about everything within the robot has some sort of plastic mount uh, that's custom to whatever. It's to hold it and also insulation from the uh, mm -hmm. conductive aluminum, of course. Yeah. So I'm actually like a good job. I mean, you're, you're a programmer. You do you design this? So you're a mechanical engineer, and then you're also a 3D designer. Because you can do what software do you use for 3D? I'm using Fusion 360, and uh, I found the limitations of Fusion 360 during this. So you broke it already. <laughs> I, I, I did. I've been to the, all their support, and basically, you don't want to model anything this size in one file. You end up, uh, you know, like the catapult assembly here ends up being a separate file, and then you you take all those different assemblies and and put them into one, and then Fusion 360 can kind of handle it, but. Uh, anything this size kind of breaks Fusion 360 down. <laughs> and what's nice about uh, the, uh, these are all open builds components, and so every extrusion, even down to the screws, uh, you can download all those step files from open builds, and so you just take those, import them into Fusion 360, assemble them however you want, and uh, and, and instantly you've got something uh, without taking the time to actually design the. Uh, you know, the extrusions and the screws and these plates yourself. Okay, okay. And then um, I learned something new today that you were telling me earlier that when you 3D print stuff, you, there's actually different materials. It's not just oh, yeah. you 3D print stuff. Right. So you use two different kind of plastic here. Yeah, so all of the structural parts that had to be strong, those are done in PETG, uh, which is Got kind of the best of both worlds of ABS plastic and uh, PLA, which are the other two really populars. Um, but these are super strong. If I, you could take this and put all your might into it, and you could not break that. Um, so all of all of the rigid parts are done in PET G. But then I also have uh, parts such as these, which are really meant as more shock absorbers, and those are printed in a plastic called TPU, which is a flexible. And it's really kind of neat. Uh, they're, they're kind yeah, of it feels like rubbery. It's like a little bit soft. Yeah, and, and the way I did that is this has actually got a 10% infill. So only 10% of this area within this block is, is filled. So it's, it's kind of a spongy result. So that is like a cross hatch between inside? like mm -hmm. or, or It's, it's a kind of a honeycomb okay. Uh, shape. Okay, okay. Yeah, beautiful. Good job. Yeah. So, well, thank you very much for joining us today. Let's take it out in the sh to the shop and uh, we'll see it dancing around. Does okay. Good? Sure. Okay, let's do it. And that's it for this week. We'll see you next week. Thank you, and for joining us.